Starting in three, two. Mind of a Geek is brought to you by the new Mind of a Geek t-shirt. Get yours today at tiny.cc slash IG swag. The following radio program you're about to listen to is provided to you, the listener, by Inked Geek Studios. Get this and other great shows at inkedgeekstudios.com. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Season 4, Episode 2 of Mind of a Geek. I am your host, Nate, and I am joined, as always, by Mr. Brandon. Brandon, how's it going? Oh, I am Brandon. You are? As always. As always. I am Brandon. That's right. All right. Uh, So our guest this evening, we are actually a big fan of and uh, of the content that he produces physically, not digitally. (laughs) Right, and he's made a lot of money off us. (laughs) He has. We are there all the time. Uh from Maine, owner of Limitless Wrestling, Randy Carver Jr. Randy, welcome to the show. How you guys doing? Thanks for having me. Oh, of course. Thanks for taking the time to come on. I'm sure you are quite busy. But... Hey, uh, not too busy tonight to be on here. Well, very cool. We appreciate it. So uh, you are, as I said, the owner of Limitless Wrestling, which is a Maine-based independent wrestling company. Yes, indeed. Uh, and it's coming up on two years yeah, uh, our two-year anniversary show is actually September 22nd in Westbrook. Wow. Very cool. So uh, so we'll just kind of start from the beginning, because uh, Brandon and I are, are big wrestling fans, uh, and um, you know we've been watching it for years, and we got introduced to your, uh, your brand uh, via John and, and Hammond from uh, the Main Event Podcast. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, They're big supporters. They are, and they have a great show, and John's actually been on uh, this show. And uh, so what was it? It was earlier in the year. Yeah. And uh, he was like, yeah, you should go check it out. And uh, we met you and it's uh, your parents that, that also yeah, helped you too, Yeah, it was your too, father right? that I started talking to first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He usually runs the door, so. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but how exciting to have a local venue to go see wrestling at again. It's right. It's been... 15 years since I've been able to do that since EWA. Yeah, because it was, yeah, high school going to the, the, the right. Portland Armory. And I will say that obviously this is much better than EWA was. <laughs> so. I've heard some worse stories of EWA for well, sure. Well, let me tell you, I went to a show at the Armory in Portland on Stevens Ave when I yeah. was probably 16. There was a ladder match. Now, ladder matches are great. I'm pretty sure you were there. Guy gets to the top of the ladder, goes for the belt. The guy he's facing goes up to grab him off the ladder, grabs his tights. Next thing you know, big fat cock on the top of the ladder for everyone to see. I oh, what the was, fuck, it man? Was, it was Adam Hasty. Was it? Yeah. Oh, Jeez. tasty Adam Hasty. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, he was. Uh, he, yeah. I don't know about the tasty part, but he was trying <laughs> to show the world. Um, yeah. No, he uh, actually to, to go throw a little bit of a connection there so johnny who we go to shows with yep. he worked at a car dealership with him no shit yeah really he knew adam yeah <laughs> so up. but anyway so back to limitless so yeah so again you're coming up on the two-year anniversary uh so you're you're a young guy like when i found out that you, you were the owner and how old you were like i was really impressed and really blown away so how did you get into like forming this organization and kind of establishing it and getting it to where it is uh, I got like super lucky when I was young because like the main wrestling scene is very open to uh, letting new people kind of come in and get a start somewhere um, because, you know, there are a lot of lower tier companies around like there's, you know, Northern Maine, Central Maine and Southern Maine. There's pretty much one for every area. So uh, I started with a company called IWE, which has run some Southern Maine shows, mostly Central Maine and uh, luckily I, I was 15 and just, you know, didn't know shit and was trying to do something and get on their ring crew for a couple months. And then I was announcing after that. And then, you know, luckily I made a lot of connections and I started ring announcing all around new England and, you know, a couple of years went by and I was already kind of salty about what was being presented in the state. And I just knew, 
you know, I, I, I see what it is in other places and I'd like to bring that to the state of Maine. So I, uh, I definitely got lucky being able to make a lot of connections when I was young to be able to build quickly with what we have now. You have a lot more initiative than we I was had like, just that, that response excited. Like, I'm like, right. like, that's cool. Like yeah. it, <laughs> now the fact that you said that Northern central and Southern Maine, like I'm from Northern Maine and I have never seen anything related to wrestling going on up there at all. So yeah, it's got to be a few and far between. New... And what constitutes Northern Maine? I'm from Aroostook. I'm from Presque Isle. Yeah. So. No, no, no. Uh, there, there's one in Aroostook County right now that is uh, on the fringe of like, there is some trained guys and there's some not, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but they have a ring. Really? Uh, <laughs> that is but, amazing, uh, man. That's about as far as the backyard wrestling goes. It's like, oh. well, we had a trampoline. Right. <laughs> I got to tell yeah. Dirty Steve about um, that. He lives up there. From what I understand, they've gotten a lot better than where they started, which is good. But uh, IWE used to run in Island Falls, which is not too far from Holton. Right. Um, but yeah, there's uh, Northern Maine's pretty scarce. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Well, in and of itself, it is pretty scarce by nature. Yeah, so, yeah. for sure. But no, so that, so that's really cool. So you uh, so you were doing that. You said you started. You were kind of in the industry at 15, uh, kind of working your way through getting there. So. It's uh, you know, it's 2017. We got two years coming up in September here, so you know, 2015. So, at what point did you kind of make the decision of like, okay, so Maine needs better. I know that I can present better. I'm gonna do this. Let's get it going. Like, you just come up with a name and use your connections and be like, hey, we're gonna do something here. Kinda like uh. I remember in 2014, I did like a show in Skowhegan and like the venue smelled like piss and the show was terrible. And I just like was driving home after the show. Like, this is not how like wrestling should be. Like it pissed me off to know that people paid for that show and just how bad it was. And just like, you know, the show itself had a lot of cancellations and shit like that. And it was just thrown together. Shit happens. But like, there, there was just nothing cool being presented, nothing different than what had been presented for, you know, fucking, what, 20 years or so. So uh, I had been going down to, like, Beyond Wrestling in Rhode Island, and I had seen a lot, of, you know, PWG, like, the shit, the good indie shit that everyone was watching in, like, 2014, and it just something clicks of, like, why can't this be done, you know, in the state of Maine? So you after that November show, like, I just kind of tried to figure shit out i tried to think of like everything that i need to do to start a good organization and who i want there and who can be you know building pieces and be supportive of what we're trying to do and we luckily like within you know six or seven months got a really good core group of guys like uh, you know ace romero and xavier bell and the mainstay posse even though they weren't wrestling on the shows yet um we got a really good core group of guys who helped build it yeah that's cool ace romero man so, uh, can I ask about that hardcore match from the last show? Holy shit. Um, Did you get any you know, backlash so I, I from that? I posted something earlier today. He fucking invited his mom to that show. I'm like, that is the worst fucking show to invite <laughs> oh, your man. parents to. Like, <laughs> he was so fucking pissed at me, and I knew it. But um, That's the craziest match we've ever done by far. Definitely. I, it's funny, being at that show, I brought my cousin, and I think that was the biggest group we had going to one of your events. And... Um, Mm, I don't know. It's one thing to watch a hardcore match, like an old school hardcore match on screen, and another yeah. thing completely to see it in person. Yeah, this yeah, was, it's it was scary. a borderline death match for sure. Right. Yeah. So with the with the fluorescent light bulbs, like it was it was the fans bring the weapons, right? Oh yeah. We so uh, did you know I beforehand? Really brought nothing. Like right. that was everything was brought. That's false, actually. I brought Legos. That was it. Yeah, I would I would have brought Legos too. That would. I had a box deal. of Legos, but literally everything else was brought by fans, which was it was surprising, honestly, what so, everybody brought. People, so did there, you, know you have some sadistic was, fucking fans, right? Did you know beforehand <laughs> it was going to go the way that it went? Um, I don't I don't think I expected it to go that far, but uh, it was honestly one of those things that I kind of put in the back of my mind of like, and that's a stupid thing to do because. I know Ace Romero is a fucking lunatic, and I know AR Fox is an even bigger lunatic. So, uh, but I just kind of put it in the back of my mind of saying, you know, we have insurance with the building, so yeah. 
uh, everything should be okay. I uh, saw you walking yeah. around. You looked mighty fucking nervous for yeah. a while. Oh, I was. Yeah, um, you, yeah. We we brought AR Fox to the emergency room after to get cleaned up, and luckily, like neither guy had any substantial injuries. But uh, it was nuts. Well, that's kind of. I mean, that's how you want. If, if you are gonna do a match like that, well, it is called limitless. I mean. Right. Exactly. No yeah. limit. Uh, if you are, I mean, that's that's what you want. You want the match to where you are like maybe almost borderline scaring the audience. Yeah. It looks I violent. Mean, it looks brutal, but everyone comes out virtually without yeah. a scratch. It's a different feel yeah. for sure. And um, honestly, like we we didn't get a ton of complaints from people, which I was surprised because when you present something totally different like that, like I expected a few right. weird reviews, and there were a couple people who were like, "Yeah, maybe it was a little far, but it was still cool to watch." Yeah, but yeah. I, I was all up in the Facebook reviews. discussion after the fact, and it didn't seem that bad. So is that a direction you would go again? um potentially if the circumstances are right like right. uh i i never book a match just to book it but um in that case you know ace romero and ar fox uh the feud's been pretty much going on since january of 16 and uh i felt like after they had an anything goes match and their you know regular singles match that that was probably the avenue to go with because you know what's the next step up from anything goes it's the right. fans bring the violence right. you know what exactly. i mean so I've never but, bought one of your DVDs, but uh, w in terms of the feuds, like on the DVDs, are there promos and interludes and things that like yeah, yeah. push all um, of that? I try to include, uh, sometimes the space is limiting. We do do two disc sets on every DVD, but uh, usually anything that we post online for a promo or a video package leading up to a match is usually included on the DVD so that, uh, you know, we have a lot of people like uh, – around the country who order the dvds so if it's their first time grabbing one i want them to understand you know why everything's happening so right. that's cool um but regardless anybody like youtube.com slash limitless wrestling has everything categorized by show in a playlist so um there's easy ways to catch up yeah i'll have to check that out i want to see how you guys cut that all together because i see you have what yeah, three sure. three cameramen or so or so Oh yeah, there yeah. there's some. I actually just put up a clip today of the cannonball into the uh, into the light tube structure. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a really That's cool shot of it. Yeah, I'll have to check the only it out. the only thing I mean, being there and and again, I mean, we won't focus on that on that match completely, but I mean, I, I loved the match. Like like he said, first ever live in person hardcore match, and there's definitely more of a real feeling when you're there as opposed to watching yeah. it on TV. Yep, um, I agree. The only thing I would say because I I caught a pretty cool shot of it. Uh, with my camera when I was there and then uh, I saw what you had uploaded uh, this afternoon. And the one thing I noticed then, and then seeing what you uploaded is what you don't get from that, that you got in the building was the pop when he yeah. landed on the bulbs. Yep. Because I was thinking that too, because I, I cut the clip today. I'm like, man, this sounded so much fucking louder in person. It did. Like yeah. it just it was, echoed the building. Exploded. And then, if you were watching that corner in that turnbuckle when he hit, like it was, it was like one of those pyro guns that just shot yeah. the fluorescent dust, and yeah. it was it was incredible to see in person. Yeah. Uh, yeah but again, I mean, I enjoyed it. I I'm like I was an ECW fan. I'm very much of that whole like yeah, bring yeah, it hardcore. It was, it was always ECW for me. Too. But I think when you, I think from the promoting end of it and the booking end of it, I think when, like, like you said, you don't book a match just to book it. Like right. there has to be a reason for it. And I think when you keep, especially a match like that, when you keep them few and far between, yeah. it makes them more special. Yeah. There's no need yeah. to oversaturate. Yeah. But, Cause you know, that, cause you get desensitized. Every now and then when you pull that out. Yeah. And then it just becomes every other match. But right. no, I was, I, I mean, we didn't, I didn't even know it was on the card and I was there and I saw it and like, uh, Ace is amazing. And yeah, uh, he's so crazy. Yeah, and he's come, he's come leaps and bounds from the start. He, he was in the main event of the first Limitless show, and just it's crazy how far he's come in just like just about two years. Right. So to that effect, you say you have those core group of guys that have built a brand. How do you end up finding those guys initially? So uh, a lot of them, I either met from shows in Maine or met you know when I was ring announcing around New England somewhere like. Uh, at that point, like Ace Romero was wrestling primarily in Maine. Um, I think just after we started Limitless or just before he moved to Rhode Island to start training with Biff Busick, who's in NXT as Oni Lorcan. Um, but uh, we got lucky, you know, we had a very good core group like uh, 
Brian Fury, who's a, you know, a New England veteran. He'd been wrestling so many years and he trained a lot of our roster guys like uh, Rick Mastone, Christian Casanova, Anthony Green, Donovan Dijak. Like, uh, I don't know. It's, it, we just had a lot of good connections. And then once we had that core group of guys, like, you know, the Romero's AGs, whoever, um, a lot of word of mouth goes from there. You know, when we're halfway through 2016, I'm taking a lot of guys advice on new people like, uh, Tyler Nitro, who's been branching out, Cam Zagami, Mr. Grimm, a lot of guys that you see in year two are, you know, a lot of the guys who are in year one suggestions. Right. Mr. Grimm has a huge pop, man. It's crazy. He does. And my God, that, I mean, I've only ever seen him hit it once. I'm guessing it's not something he does all the time, but that spinning tombstone. Yeah. That's fucking nuts. It yeah. is. The first time I saw that, I was like, holy fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I... I thoroughly enjoy the program. Like I said, you know, we've gone. I mean, the only reason we left early Friday was because of the heat, which we talked about in the pre-show a little bit. But uh, I'm excited for the event on September 22nd, actually, because, you know, like, as you see, we do our shows on Friday night. And that was kind of what I did was when we were doing our booking for the podcasts, I was like, all right, what night? Are the, what nights are the Limitless shows? Because we're not scheduling podcasts those nights because we're going yeah. to the Limitless <laughs> show. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, <clears throat> during Nothing Gold, you made the Jack Swagger announcement. And I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> uh, so that's really cool. Uh, and I'm excited for that. So when it comes to like you were talking about the booking and a lot of it is like, you know, suggestions or recommendations or, hey, you know, you should look at this guy. He's been here. Um, so that's that when it comes to the names that they were on the WWE platform, like Hornswoggle and Swagger and things like that, like within the career of being a professional wrestler, is it kind of like once they kind of go out of that spotlight, I'll do a lot of them go back to the indie scene. Is that just kind of like the cycle of being a pro wrestler? Yeah. Um, I mean, it honestly depends on what they want to do, you know, once they're done with whatever contract, whether it's WWE or impact or whatever, um, you know, you see guys like, uh, Tyler Rex is a good, for instance, and even Luke Robinson, like those are two guys who, um, had somewhat of like something for a career in WWE. You know, Luke's was tough enough and Tyler Rex had a good run. Um, now Tyler Rex has his own like bodybuilding and nutrition company. Luke Robinson has Wolfpack fitness that he runs at Auburn. Like some guys just, you know, maybe they wrestle part-time or maybe they don't wrestle at all because, you know, they're just done with it and they want to do a new venture. But a lot of guys you'll see uh, like Cody Rhodes is a good, for instance, um, they'll go back to the independence. Cody Rhodes had never done it before. Like he was, he was a makeshift WWE guy. He was OVW and then WWE. So he had never got this experience, but um, the independents right now are probably the hottest they've been since, uh, I don't know, the early two thousands, like when ring of honor was first starting up because there's so much work uh, wrestlers are getting paid, you know, the best they ever have before because the crowds are so big places like ev everywhere is in a boom period, including Maine. Um, so there's, you know, there's a living to be made, you know, close, somewhat close to what they were making before. So, wow. um, you know, regardless of if they have a contract with ring of honor and new Japan, or if they just want to do Indies, like, uh, they can still make a pretty good living. And, uh, you know, I would say probably 80 to 85% who get done somewhere, go to the independence. Wow. Do you. Do you think that, and again, this is just coming from my opinion, do you think that perhaps the boom in the indie is because on the 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 televised scale, we are being presented with what some could argue is a not so entertaining product? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it depends on the fan. I think, uh, I think wrestling is just somehow getting popular again. Right. Um, I think a lot of the WWE mainstream fans are being introduced to these independent wrestlers who WWE has signed. Right. And they're not shying away from talking about their past of the independence. So like they definitely seem more is a open, lot more well-known within like the WWE fan community. And then um, I, I think it's just like a lot of people who used to like wrestling will see Monday night raw or some kind of, I think Lucha underground has a lot to do with it as well. Yep. Just, there's a lot of televised wrestling right now that someone can flick on and say, wow, I really miss fucking wrestling. And they'll, try to find something in their area that's, you know, good to go to. Right. I, think I mean, it is a lot of nostalgia for us, but coming from the Attitude Era versus what's on TV now, I'm more entertained by a live show than I am what I get on TV, despite the fact that the roster now is great. Right. Like, the WWE roster currently 
your Sami Zayn's and your Owens and shit. All those guys from Ring of Honor that are there now, fucking awesome. But they don't utilize them the way I would like to see them utilized. Right. So I get more satisfaction out of going to one of your shows and seeing that. Right. Oh, definitely. I mean, when it comes to like, and I I said this uh, this past Friday. I said it uh, the show a couple months ago. Um, because we we had a or and, and still kind of so, quasi do we have a, a podcast where we kind of go on and and we review the most recent WWE pay per view, yeah. And uh, I I said to him both times, or actually I think all the times that we've been to Limitless when you guys have your opening match, I'm like, how how great is it for Limitless and for Randy, and also what does it say about WWE that a little. I mean, a house show, independent show, whatever you want to call it, uh, from a, a small, uh, a small organization in Maine, puts on a better opening match than a televised pay per view. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. I literally, I've, I've, I mean, I've been to a small handful of your shows now since we found out about you. Uh, thanks to again, thanks to John, who's in the chat. So, John, welcome to the chat room. Thanks Talk for coming to, to hang out. Uh, but. Um, like it's just it's I, I've yet to see a match that I was not entertained by. Which yeah, which that's I good. Yeah, that's a compliment, honestly. Which I cannot say for you know, WWE. There there's always the matches where we just end up chatting because the match just doesn't yeah. hold our interest. But well, a lot I've, of times we're hate fucking it. Like <laughs> fucking, what the fuck is this? Yeah. And this there's is fucking stupid. There's though. nobody on the roster. And the thing is, is like they're that they're out there to perform, they're out there to do a job, they're out there to have a good time, but they also have fun with it. And I think you really see right. that on their faces. Um, the match, and I, I forget the guy's name that I, I forget who he went against, and, and I feel bad. But uh, th- not the, the the night with the hardcore match. The one uh, it was Paul Lendon versus who was the guy he went uh, against? Anthony Green. Okay, and when he had that picture of when he was there young and he met Paul, and then yeah, like that was he, great, like man. that moment was, that was so because so, cool. I'm. I'm very sappy with wrestling when it comes to that yeah. regard. Like I like the handshakes. I like the fact that we've kind of broken the kayfabe and we can see what goes on behind the scenes. Like I like that reality element to it. So when right. something like that can happen in the ring, like I thought that was awesome. Yeah. Cause that was legit. Like, uh, you know, I've, I've known Anthony green for well for about a year and a half. And just uh, that from the start, I knew, you know, that was one of his dream matches and to be able to make that happen. And, you know, Paul was so impressed by Anthony Green because, you know, with a, with a story like that, you know, you never know if you're Paul in Paul London shoes, you don't know what to expect from this guy. Like, uh, who knows how good of a wrestler he actually is? Is he just getting booked against him? Cause it's a nice story, but you know, Anthony Green can go like he, he took Paul under the limit. It was a fantastic match. So, I think that made it even better. And uh, Paul Lennon was just very impressed by Anthony Green, which is very cool. Uh, you had had a conversation with Paul for yeah. a while. I mean, I went over and talked to him while you were over there. Like, I got tired of watching you fucking suck his <laughs> dick. I was like, oh, I guess I got to go over there, too. Yeah, no. So, we... yeah, but he was a wicked nice guy, man. And even Swoggle, too. I went and talked to Swoggle when he was there. I talked to him for a while, man. Fucking super nice. Oh yeah, yeah, and he's. Did you see the announcement that he's also going to be at the yeah, show the twenty second? So, yeah, no, it's uh, like I said, it's it's a great promotion uh, from what I've seen so far, and I don't I don't plan on missing an event whenever it's not bought, whenever it's possible not to. Uh, so I, again, I thoroughly enjoy what you put on there. So the technical side of it, so behind the scenes, so we talk about the booking things like that. So when it comes to everything else, like I assume the business end of it, I mean, running a wrestling promotion is just like running anything else, right? Like I mean, you just it's. Just... Yeah, I mean, to an extent, uh, we do pretty much everything in house. So, like, we will make the DVDs in house. We buy the T-shirts. Uh, we send them to the company to get the graphics on them. We get them back. Uh, we send the tickets out in house. Like, it's it's very much a like grassroots independent wrestling promotion. That's that's not just us. Like, that's pretty much any you know actual independent promotion. Um, we have a very, very small group of guys who are, uh, you know, close helpers like uh, Danger Kid and Aiden Agro. Uh, they help out with a lot of the promotion and postering stuff because I'm not in Southern Maine. So luckily Danger Kid is now. So um, Jason Alexander, uh, he helps with a lot of shit. Molly Adams, uh, the main event podcast guys. And then it's like, 
my family. It's like my mom and her friend run the merch. Uh, my girlfriend usually does 50 50. My dad runs the door usually. So we're a very tight knit group to get everything done, but it always gets done. Nice. That must be a great feeling to have like, again, your mom and dad there like that. That must be really cool to kind of have that and know that like they're helping you build this and you guys are working together. Uh, yeah, for sure. They've always been very supportive, which is, you know, uh, it's it's a very uh, you know having a wrestling company is a very different venture to take with your life but they've been you know nothing but supportive so it's been very cool now are, are either of them wrestling fans prior to this no fucking no way uh, <laughs> so, so so but uh you know my dad will swear up and down that he doesn't like it but i'll get home from work or something on a monday night and he'll have monday night raw turned on in the kitchen <laughs> yeah, of so, course uh, so he's but, no, he's like, hate uh, fucking it they, they kind of turned into <laughs> wrestling fans like they're they're not too much of a fan of the televised product, but when they're there in person, like they, they fucking dig it. So, well, that, I mean, there's something to be said for that. Like I said, not only, not only do you put on and, and, and the people that you hire for the night put on a great show, but again, it's the live experience. Uh, like I, to, to, I mean, similar idea. I mean, I guess it's still kind of like, you know, same target audience. Like I can't sit and watch a NASCAR race on TV. I, I can't yeah. do it. You don't want to go left for hours? No, but I can go to Beach Ridge. <laughs> and at Beach Ridge, it's entertaining. Right. Because yeah. you get the feeling. You've got the noise. You've got the crowd. You're right. there. You're in it. And it's, I think it's the same idea. It's when you are watching, I mean, anything really, when you're watching it on TV, you have what is limited to the microphone and the camera. And right. whoever is producing that, whether and w w the collaboration between the cameramen and the guys in the truck and everything else, they have to make sure that what is on that TV is excellent. And you you have three situations. You either have where they focus on the camera and the live show misses out or, or because everything is focused to a central point or the camera's missing it and the live show gets great. And then you have that rare occasion where both are a very entertaining product. Right. And with you guys, there's so much focus on that live show and again, I, I mean, I, I can't say enough that I, I enjoy the content. I mean, for somebody yeah. who's been watching wrestling since I was a little kid, uh, my my first ever wrestling pay-per-view was April 4th, uh, 1993, because it was on wow. my it was my ninth birthday. And it was Were you wrestling, born it was, yet? It was WrestleMania. I was not. I was born in 97. It was, it was you were born in 97? Oh, it, yes. was, it was WrestleMania 9. Wow. And it was at I the Caesar old. Palace in Las Vegas, Las Vegas, Nevada. And it was, I'm sure you've probably gone back and watched it. I'm uh, sure I have. I'm honestly like the fucking worst at wrestling history. Like, okay, I so I, I I bet John in the chat room is probably laughing. But it was where they wore. It was where <laughs> I'm they. So bad. It was where they wore all the togas. So you had like yes. gorilla yeah, monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and that was the the infamous return of Hogan where, uh, Yokozuna had beat Bret Hart, but then Hogan came out and beat Yokozuna. And see, yeah, I, yeah. I like it's ingrained. Stuff. It was my first ever one, and from that moment, I fell in love with wrestling. Yeah, and uh, and it always worked for me because the the WrestleMania is lined up with my birthday because they were always within my birthday week because my birthday right. is April fourth, so I literally aged with wrestling. I'm the same age as WrestleMania, yeah, so it was cool. kind of a cool thing there. And that's uh, what I always say about Ninja Turtles, man. I came out the same year they did. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it it so I'm curious for the indie scene. Uh, so you know, you go back way back in wrestling history. You know, you talk 50s, 60s, 70s, things like that. Wrestling was very territorial. You yeah. know, you had you know your northeast, your southeast, and you know you had a couple different companies. But for the most part, people didn't kind of cross the streams, uh, which happened once the McMahon's and then you know Ted Turner and like that. It kind of became na national and then global. Right. On the indie scene now, I know because you had mentioned like different regions, different territories, things like that. Is it still very territorial on the indie scene? Like are the wrestlers, like other than your names that are maybe traveling, like your swaggers and swoggles and things like that, but swaggers it, and swoggles, swaggers right? and swoggles. Uh, we should have named the show that. There you go. Uh, when it comes to, you know, like your, your ace and, and people like that, uh, main, main state posse, are they regional? Like, are they kind of in the, the main New Hampshire, Mass, New England area? Are these people who travel across the country? Like, um, well, I wouldn't say for them across the country yet, but like one of the big things that I really wanted to do with limitless wrestling from the start is I wanted it to be a combination of, um, some of the, you know, some of the best local talent in new England 
who maybe hasn't had a chance to have a big platform yet to jump off of and a mix of national or, you know, highly asked for independent talent who maybe doesn't wrestle in the state of Maine, maybe ever before a lot of, a lot of the bigger name independent guys that we bring in have never wrestled in Maine before. Didn't even know there was wrestling in Maine before, before us. Didn't even know uh, where Maine was we're building up a little <laughs> reputation for limitless wrestling. So a lot of them do know about us now, but, right. um, but Ace Romero, like uh, I would say of like the limitless core guys uh, he's had the best success because now he's wrestling for beyond wrestling on the regular uh, he just debuted in CZW. Uh, he's going to be there consistently throughout the year. Main State Posse, they're, like, all over the place now. Uh, Massachusetts, New York. I know they're wrestling in Brooklyn coming up. They're in Massachusetts tonight, actually. Wow. Um, like, Anthony Green, he's making his debut for Ethan Page's promotion in Canada in August. So, uh, a lot of these guys, um, I'd like to think we're helping them a little bit with whether it be the big matches that they're getting or the content that's coming out. Um I try to at least supply them with their matches from our shows on a private link so they can send it to other promoters. Like, uh, I I think it's very just, it doesn't make sense to me when promoters will have these banger shows or even just have, you know, regular shows and just not supply their talent with footage because why wouldn't you want to help them get to a bigger platform? You know what I mean? Right. You know, we're all, we're all in this together. I'm trying to build, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say I, because I know, everybody who comes in limitless like we all have the same goal to build this company bigger and to build their stock bigger as an independent wrestler so oh for sure because i I mean if that doesn't work like that if they're wrestling for you the bigger they help make you the bigger you help make them and it's just it's a back and forth give and take sure exactly yeah so it's uh yeah i mean it's, it's just one of those things where it's i mean we had talked about it years ago we always joked about you know, becoming wrestlers. And even at the, not the event Friday, but the one prior to that, you, there was a, a guy there who does a local wrestling school, I guess. And, um, you know, he, he almost had, been scuffling hillbilly, Larry Huntley. <laughs> could have been, I didn't catch his name, but I, I remember if you would have heard that name, you would not have forgotten. No, I wouldn't know. Scuffling uh, hillbilly. Scuffling hillbilly. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm six foot six one when I'm standing up straight and I walk by and, and he's like, Hey, you want to be a wrestler? <laughs> <laughs> and uh i mean you know if i wasn't mid-30s there's part of me that almost kind of thought about it yeah we but, only backyard wrestled and talked about it all the time right for 15 years but uh <laughs> no but it i mean it totally would have been cool so for somebody who wants to get into wrestling like there are obviously local schools in maine and and even just like the new england area but like what is like what is a good path i, I like have you in your promotion have you debuted anyone where like they were new they were recently trained and like they are starting with you guys have you had anyone like that yet i don't think we've had anybody's like first or second matches but uh i definitely with anyone in this area um i always point them to brian fury at the new england pro wrestling academy um it it, you know you can look at the alumni and it doesn't lie uh sasha banks uh, Donovan Dijak, Anthony Green, um, Warbeard Hanson was training there when it was the Chaotic Training Center. Oh, Warbeard. Brian I love Lewis. Warbeard, man. Um, so many people just when it was the Chaotic Training Center and then through Brian Fury, now it's the New England Pro Wrestling Academy. Uh, that is the premier place to train in the Northeast, not even just New England. Uh, they pump out dudes all the time. And then, you know, guys who are just debuting now. And the one I'm going to talk about for like kind of recent people is Josh Briggs. Um, I think he's only been wrestling maybe a year. I'm not even sure if he's been wrestling a year yet, but he was trained by Brian Fury. Uh, I had Anthony Green and Ace Romero, who I heavily rely on their opinions for new talent within the area because, um, you know, it's running limitless wrestling is a lot. So when people send in footage, I don't always have a chance to check it out for new people. So I rely on a lot of people who I trust their opinions of to tell me, you know, who's someone I need to, you know, keep an eye on and book whenever I can. And Josh Briggs kept coming up for them and he was so new, but we brought him into the Portland show we did in April and he absolutely killed it. And then he had a fucking hell of a match with Dijak last week. So um, he's definitely going to be a consistent comeback, but um, yeah, for schools like Fury is definitely the best Um, in the state. Larry Huntley does train. Uh, I think he trains in Buxton. He does, he doesn't buy camps. So he has this basics camp and then his like intermediate camp. So 
I want to say they're like 12 week camps that he does at a time. And, uh, that's the North Atlantic wrestling camp. If anybody wants to check that out, but, um, yeah, uh, that, that's not a bad place to start, but if you're looking for, you know, to train three or four times a week, um, with different trainers, most nights, like Nepois is the way to go. Hmm. So what is like, what's the length of the journey there? So like, let's say someone like signed up tomorrow and they started their training and now obviously progression is different person to person, but just on a rough average, like, like from, from the day you start training to the day, like you you get your first booked match, not just the training match, but like you're at like, like how long, I mean, we're talking like a a year, a couple of years. I mean, again, obviously it depends on person, but like on average, um, depending on where you're training, like, uh, I'm going to use main state posse for instance at first, cause I've seen them from their first day of training to their first match. Um, they, I believe they started training in Aiden Agra started in October of one year, uh, October of 14, I think. And, uh, danger kids started in November and, uh, I'm pretty, I don't know if my dates are off, but, they had their first match together. I think they were about five or six months in, maybe seven. Um, and that was them training maybe three or four times a month. Um, but you can you can go to, like, Brian Fury's school where you're training. And it, it depends on how much time you have, but I'm going to use them, for instance, too, because they have four classes a week now. Um, if you're training there and you're going, like, three or four times a week, um depending on how quick you pick everything up you could have your first match within like three months oh wow Um, i know uh gordon had his match (laughs) like pretty pretty fucking quick into his career and uh i just saw a dude for the first time named brett domino who came out of that school recently and i know he hasn't been training too long with brian fury and he's you know very much like show ready so it's it's pretty cool to see uh definitely depends on the person but if you're training that much per week, like you can pick shit up pretty quick. Wow. So to that end, say you, you go through the training and you become show ready. Is it just a matter of sending footage of you wrestling out to promoters and then they call you or? Yeah. I mean, uh, usually, uh, wherever you train, they're going to hook you up with some promotions that yeah. are good first match promotion, so to speak. So it's like job uh, placement. Like- Smaller promotions, uh, smaller crowds. It's a, it's a smaller scale of everything, but it's a, it's, you know, perfect places to have your first couple matches and get comfortable with everything. Um, and usually, you know, you have those connections and then you can, you know, the best thing I suggest to guys is just, just go to shows with some wrestlers from your school. Even if you're not booked, just introduce yourself with the promoter, help out with the show, build the ring, do whatever you can. And then, you know, after that, send your footage anywhere. But yeah, today is like a lot of social media is huge. So um, right. I probably get uh, probably between three to five messages a day from different wrestlers. Um, and that's just what you got to do. Um, you just got to hit up any promoters, you know, locally, anywhere, um, send them some footage, send them just anything they can check out and get their hands on or their eyes on. And um, eventually it will work out. Very cool. I, yeah, I mean, like I said, we, we always joked about it back in our high school years, and I'm sure it's a much – it's probably like the whole like back and forth where it's it's a much easier to get your name out because of social media and because of more promotions. Like you said, it's going through a boom right now, but there also must be a lot more people that are kind of vying to do it. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, so. And there are places like, uh, like XWA in Rhode Island. They do a Thursday night throwdown on every Thursday night. Um it's like five dollar tickets, but like that gives their guys from their school. Mike Bennett trains at their school, or Mike Canellis, um, and that gives those students a chance to wrestle. And I'm I'm pretty sure it's open invitation almost, as long as you you know hit up the promoter. But uh, they pretty much let anyone you know, as long as you're a trained wrestler, have matches there. So oh, cool. Uh, there are a lot of places like that who are very open to new people and giving them a chance. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Were you about to say something? Nope. Go for it. All right. Uh, <laughs> I was just no. Nope. All right. So the the other thing that kind of I I'm curious about. Uh, so, and I'm gonna bring up, I'm I'm gonna bring up top shelf. That was, <laughs> man. You read my fucking mind. That's so crazy. <laughs> there doesn't need to be two of us here. I can just be a spectator because everything that comes out of your mouth, I'm like, yeah, that's what I was. So saying. I wanna, I wanna, that's that's well, literally what I was gonna say. That's so fucked up. <laughs> 
Uh, so, uh, the character, the gimmick, uh, things like that, and and not necessarily with with just him, but I mean, he's the one that that sticks out in my mind. Uh, do you like when they come to you? Like for, I mean, we can use him specifically as, as an example. When it comes to like the drunkard in the ring gimmick that he has. Mm-hmm. Did he like? I assume that's obviously something he built. Did like? Did he bring that to you and be like, "Hey, this is my character. This is what I do." Did you guys help him form that? Like, when when you're out, when you are when you're a, an independent wrestler who kind of travels organization to organization, and you're not yep. in WWE or TNA with you know writers and people who build characters, things like that. But when they are forming it themselves, like how how is how does that work differently from the you're contracted to a company? So, uh, you know, being an independent wrestler is just that you're, you're independent. So, uh, essentially, you know, you're the one buying your gear. You're the one who's going to buy any of your merchandise. So, um, essentially you're forming your own character and, uh, it's good to be flexible. You know, if you're just starting out and you don't have a huge name in the independent pool, um, so that, you know, if a company is running, if they're taping for a television program, and they need uh, they need a jock for a character or something. You can do that. Um, I am uh, I'm very open. Like whatever people send me, I'm gonna look at and say, you know, I'm gonna see what they do. Um, and I'm not gonna look to tweak it right off the bat. I'm just gonna kind of look at it and say, could this fit into our show? Like, could this work with our audience? Um, is this something that could fit on a Limitless Wrestling show? And a lot of times, like if there's guys who we're bringing in, and I would say Troy Nelson definitely is a core guy. He's been around from day one. Um, I wouldn't say that we really tweak anything. Like if I think that you're going to fit while well, you're coming in and we're going to develop you as a wrestler and then your character is going to develop with that. So, um, and you know, I, I think wrestlers tweak their shit anyway um, for different places. Obviously some places are like uh, I, limitless is uh, very open Um, we're not like PG or anything. Um, and I mean, we're not rated R, but I don't limit the guys to say, you know, don't swear, don't do this, don't do that. There's a, there's not many restrictions at all. Right. Um, Limitless. So, um, but, uh, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, a lot of places will ask you to do something different sometimes, especially like the drunk in the ring thing isn't necessarily like what everybody loves, but it's one of the most over things with our crowd. So, Oh, he's great. (laughs) Yeah. He's awesome, man. So where were you going to, was that? Oh, that was, you, you nailed it. Oh, that was exactly what I wanted. Cool. Uh, I mean, my, 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 on my mind, my, my real last question specifically regards to the indie stuff is again, jumping promotion to promotion. Uh, and I kind of had this question back when we were talking about ACE and, um, AR, uh, so you were talking about how that feud's been going on for a while now. So yeah. these guys who may wrestle in different or like, are they known enough among or, or are fan bases mutual enough to where like like do they carry that feud to other organizations and perform it there as well, or is that a limitless feud? Um, a lot of pl- it's not really like that anymore. Like back in the day, um you'd hear about like Ric Flair and Dusty Rhodes have going to different promotions, defending the title, um, sometimes bringing their opponent with them and they go on a run of territories. Um, and even, you know, as recent as like uh, CM Punk and Chris Hero when they were doing their, you know, roundabouts with their matches. But uh, you don't see that too much anymore um, on a, such a high level. Like, I would say the most recent one would be Keith Lee and Jeff Cobb, which uh, we set up with Beyond Wrestling, where we actually ran that first match, and then it happened at Beyond Wrestling, and it happened at PWG, and um, it just kind of built up from there. And Ace Romero and AR Fox is another one where uh, we did it twice, and then CZW did it, which was very cool. Um, But it's not really like – you don't see that a ton um, where – another promotion will promote, you know, Hey, this match has happened at this promotion before and it's going to debut here. You know what I mean? They're just, they're most promotions are just going to say, this is the match we're doing. Okay. But luckily, you know, uh, beyond put it over that we did Keith Lee and Jeff Cobb before, cause the match was already online and CZW put over that we had done AR Fox and Ace Romero, which helps us because they have a lot more followers than we do, you know? Mm-hmm. So 
a lot of their followers get to either see those matches or at least look at us and say, Oh, maybe I want to check out those first couple matches. But, um, I mean, there is a lot of overlap because there's so many good independent wrestlers and there's so many promotions, like there are going to be matches done again, but the feuds don't always get recognized, I guess is the way to put it. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. I guess it doesn't, you don't necessarily need to have the feud crossover. If those guys have good in ring chemistry, then that's right. what you need. They're going to so. sell whatever they're going to sell right. there. Yeah. So is there, is there a lot of help among the organizations in that regard? Like, I mean, are there, is there any, like, like, I mean, not necessarily with the feuds like you spoke of, but just like in general cross promotion. Like I did notice that there was one, actually, I think it was Ace, uh, who I think it was the first show that we saw and he was doing the, 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 the act in the ring where like he was giving a tag team partner of his shit because he booked, he booked a match for a different promotion yeah, that night. Yeah, so they couldn't that. do their yeah. tag match. Um, um, or is like, was that pre decided? Like, do you have a problem with them announcing different organizations? No, no, no. Um, so actually like to build off of that, um, we were, originally had booked a tag match with Ace Romero and Anthony Green on that show. That was in March at Hysteria. And uh, Chaotic Wrestling, who is uh, Anthony Green's home promotion, had booked a show on the same date with Cody Rhodes. And the Chaotic guys had to pull off of my show for that show because um, Chaotic took priority for them. That was their home promotion. I, I understand that, whatever. They gave me plenty of notice to not have it be a problem. So uh, we built off that saying, you know, uh, you know, fuck you for saying that, you know, this is your place and you're not even going to fucking show up. You're going to take another booking. You know what I mean? Uh, we didn't clear that with the other promotion. I didn't feel that we had to. We didn't use them by name. We didn't really run them in the ground. It was more Anthony Green in that sense. But um we have a very good like working relationship with a few promotions, which is very beneficial. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, there are some shady promoters out there. I mean, it's going to fucking happen. They're everywhere. So um, you, I, I feel like as a promoter, you have to be picky and choosy with who you work with. But uh, Beyond Wrestling has helped us a ton. Um they helped us bring in, like, we split the flights on Chris Hero and Zack Sabre Jr. And we brought them in in January of 16, and that got us a shit ton of eyes on us. Um, they retweet our stuff all the time. We do the same. So we're both connecting with each other's audiences in that sense. Um, <laughs> we have a great relationship with CZW and uh, Pro Wrestling Revolver through Sammy Callahan. Um, he's helped us out a lot, just, just with retweets and shit like that. Like, it seems like such a small thing, but social media is so huge now that um, the retweets just reaching new followers, like it, it fucking helps a ton. So, uh, it's very cool to have like good working relationships with good independent promotions. So would you say that nowadays with social media, that's kind of negated the territorialism of the independence or you're more I'd say kind of sort of. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think social media though, regardless has been super beneficial because like, uh, well, beneficial if promotions know how to use them. Like, if they don't have right. a good social media manager, like, you're, they're going to have to rely on their, you know, their local ticket sales most of the time. Right. But, um, Which it's stupid guys, not to use. I mean, social media is beneficial for everybody now. It's beneficial yeah. for us. I mean, it's just the advent of, of, of the new world and the way that things work with the internet. Everything is accessible it's so much easier now if you just know how to push it out there. Well, I mean, look, yeah. we're two idiots who talk on microphones. Well, that's my point. <laughs> I mean, you just these these days, you just kind of need an idea, and then depending on what your idea is, maybe like a little bit of a wallet to back it up. But I mean, oh, we have that. the the, op <laughs> the the options are out there. I mean, if you want to do it, you do it. I mean, right. That's the one thing. Like, I mean, me and him had a me and him had a conversation about Limitless and about about you very briefly after that first event that we went to. Uh, you know, when we we met you and spoke to you, and uh, you know, met your dad and stuff, and and. You know, we found out how old you were and we were like, man, like that, that's impressive that you, like, you just had an idea, you had a drive and you ran with it and you have a great product that you built out of it and it's only getting better. Um, I appreciate that. And, uh, I mean, it's just, it's, it's impressive. I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a fan and, uh, that, that, that was partly why, I mean, not just for the sake of the show and, you know, to get eyes and to, to get, get more eyes 
on the internet to your stuff, but uh, also just as a fan of yours and what you promote and what you what you provide as a as an entertainment product. Uh, it was it was really cool to um, to be able to you know hang out and talk about it and kind of yeah, figure out sure. that. To that fun. end, do you still have patches available? Because I had asked you that before, and then I never oh, bought yeah. one. Uh, I think I have. I did another order of them. I think I have five left now. Okay, I've got to buy one. I keep. Yeah, for sure. Those, those flew. I was surprised. Like, patches yeah. are big. We know if those would sell, but they flew. Yeah, patches no, are patches indeed are big. Yeah. But uh, did you have any? No follow ups or no, other? No, I'm satisfied, man. I uh the the question about Troy was what I wanted to ask. I was waiting for I'm that, sorry, but then I... you beat me to it. So <laughs> I was waiting for the right time. Get talking about wrestling, man. I get excited. I know, I know. It's cool. <laughs> so uh I'll give you a chance to promote. I saw that you uh had posted on Facebook we got a uh you got a sale on the DVDs going on for the next twenty four yeah. hours. Um, yeah, so until I'm not taking it off until midnight tomorrow, but, uh, it's a buy two get two DVD sale for any event out of 2016. Uh, we ran, I think like seven shows in 2016. So, uh, any of those that are out on DVD, um, you can email me, Randy Carver, yahoo.com. I can give you the information, but it's, uh, it's the price of two DVDs plus the shipping and you get four DVDs of your choice from 2016. So, uh, it's a pretty good deal going on for the next like 24 hours. Very cool. So with seven events that you put on, I mean, you could pay for four and get the entire event list for 2016. Yeah. So for sure. That's that's very cool. Uh, so let before we let you go, we'll give you a chance to let let's promote the the next show coming up in September. What yeah, can what can you tell I got, us about I got a poster it? Poster right here. I, I came prepared. Very cool. The, nice. It, it's, <laughs> We got it was a little distorted on the camera, but yeah. So Swagger's on the cover. That's a great poster. Yep, it's an you. awesome looking poster. So what do we have on the card so far? We got Swagger and and Hornswoggle now, or Swoggle. Oh, yeah. It's not Horns. So, uh, it's not Hornswoggle World anymore. Champion Jack Swagger. Uh, Hornswoggle goes one on one with Top Shelf Troy Nelson. Yep. Uh, we got a loser leaves limitless match, and uh, this isn't going to be something that we uh, you know we write off for a month and then bring them back. Like we're th- this guy's not coming back for a long time. Whoever loses, uh, it's Cam Zagami versus Tyler Nitro. Um, just problems for a year, um, legitimate problems that uh, they were tagging an XWA as well. Um, two dudes who legitimately don't like each other that we uh, tried out as a tag team and it did not work. So uh, this is what we built, <laughs> and now. Uh, Loser's going to leave. Uh, Tyler Nitro, Cam Zagami. Uh, I think this will be a very fun match. These are two guys who are uh, very young in their careers thus far. Cam Zagami was on uh, Fox's American Grit with John Cena. Tyler Nitro trained by Pepper Parks, who's Braxton Sutter in Impact Wrestling, and JT Dunn. So uh, I think they have a lot to prove, uh, both of them, in this match. So that'll be a very fun one. And then uh, the bombshell at the end of the last show, it's Ace Romero and Anthony Green. Uh, the match that literally everyone's been asking me to to put on a show since like October of last year. And uh, the firebrand, Brian Fury, is going to be the special guest referee. He's the guy who put them together in a tag team. So that'll be very interesting. Pretty cool to have uh, Brian Fury going to be back in a ring. Um, also on the show, Willow Nightingale will be making her Limitless Wrestling debut. we got a lot more Yeah, I'm super excited to see that. That should be really yeah. cool. She, she's awesome. Uh, yeah. I saw her at a Beyond studio taping a couple months ago, and she's fucking incredible so yeah, i'm pumped um, for that we got a lot of announcements coming up uh tickets go on sale this coming tuesday august 1st 7 p.m there's only 50 vip tickets available they are 40 dollars. they get you early entry guaranteed front row and a free picture and autograph combo with jack swagger so uh once those are gone they're absolutely gone so uh tuesday at 7 p.m uh that's on limitlesswrestling.com uh, anything you want basically is limitlesswrestling.com slash store. We got youtube.com slash limitless wrestling. We got 15,000 subscribers. We got free content every week. Uh, Twitter at LW main and facebook.com slash limitless wrestling. Very cool. He does that whole like, Hey, check out my was, shit a lot better thinking, than we do. <laughs> I was just thinking, yeah, he's had his time in the ring announcing for sure. <laughs> That's true. Okay, Polly Heyman over here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So I can say, as I've said enough uh, on tonight's episode, as if you're a Maine or just New Hampshire, Mass, New England resident, if you are a fan of wrestling or just like a fun night, have a couple beers and, and watch some people 
uh, I won't say, I, I won't say pretend, but watch some people put on an entertaining show of, of combat. Uh, go check out Limitless Wrestling. Uh, now, do you do shows it, like where, other other than Westbrook? Like Westbrook's your southern main. Do you yeah. do, do you do shows uh, up north? We haven't since February of this year. Um, we run Orono every now and then. Orono is where we started. Um, I'm actually 15 minutes north of Orono myself, so um, the Orono shows were very easy. That's where we started, so it was an easy start. But uh, we don't have anything scheduled as of now in Central Maine. Um, there are rumblings that will be a part of a festival that's going down in Central Maine in September, but I don't have anything set. But um, I haven't given up on Central Maine for sure, but everything coming up is in Westbrook. No, I would think that like with UMO being – when UMO is in session, if you did like Old Town, I don't know if yeah. you can get like Old Town High School, the gym or something like that. You would yeah. think that right oh, there no, would there be was, perfect. There was a definite boom when we ran Orno and college was in session. Like we yeah. would boom up by 40 to 50 people every time. Yeah, because I lived in Bradley for a long time. And like yeah. I would have loved to have – I went to – Leonard Moore in, in uh, Old Town. I would have loved to have walked to the high school after school and seen some of that. That would have been great. Right. That would have been better than going to watch Old Town football and trying to make out <laughs> with girls and fail. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, that'd be cool. I'd, I'd like to see in Central Maine. I would make the drive for that, man, just to go back yeah, to the old sure. stomping grounds. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Cool. So as Randy was saying, next show is September 22nd. At the uh, the Westbrook Armory in Westbrook, it's right across from Westbrook High School. Uh, I highly recommend checking it out. Um, it again, it's a great show. And then, I mean, the draw, Jack Swagger. <laughs> uh, Swagger's great. And then again, Swaggle. Uh, he was he was so much fun to watch. Man, that match was it was it was an impressive match. Uh, I, I know there's other details surrounding that match, and I'm not gonna bring them up. But <laughs> yep. but um, it it's it's. it's it's unfortunate that that match cannot be used for promotion for you. <laughs> Dude, I was so fucking pissed. I'm like, this had to be the fucking match that I did. You know? Yeah. It's, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, so we were certain- well, luckily this time, uh, I- I'm going to make sure I'm going to put top shelf through the ringer and make sure that he's all fucking clear. <laughs> and, uh, we'll be able to put this one on a fucking DVD. Right, man. That again, I mean, once we go off air, we can talk about that a little bit, but man, that was Jesus Christ. I was pissed. Yep. I was pissed. But anyway, anyway, um, yeah. So check it out. September 22nd. We will be there. Um, we'll give them a, I mean, he, he ducked out a chat, but, uh, you know that the main event podcast guys are going to be there. So, um, if you go, oh. And you, uh, Randy's always there. Randy's very approachable. I mean, that's how we got to meet him and just walked up to him and be like, hey, you own this shit. Cool. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Anyone, anyone ever at a show, if you want to chat about anything, I'm always there. So, yeah. So definitely show up, uh, support local independent wrestling and, uh, yeah, check it out. Cause it's good shit. You said you were good. I'm good. You promoted your shit. I think that we are good. I am going to be efficient and see who next week's guest is because i am losing my mind all right zenger cool all right so uh randy thank you very much for coming on man this was a lot of fun it was nice to hear some of like the you know the behind the scenes of what goes on for sure man thank you for having me i had a lot of fun i I appreciate that and uh congratulations on on you know having this desire and launching it and launching it extremely successfully yeah Thank you, Sam. So, I appreciate that. For sure. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll definitely see you there on uh, on the 22nd. Uh, so, again, LimitlessWrestling.com for all the information in regards to Limitless Wrestling. Uh, if you want to see some great matches, go check out that DVD promotion he's got going on right now, uh, going on until midnight tomorrow night, which will be July 29th. Um, so I will have this show uploaded tomorrow morning so people will still have the day to catch it. Um, cool. And then, yeah, so go check that out. As for this show, you can catch Mind of a Geek live every Friday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time, unless there's a Limitless event going on. <laughs> uh, but 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash Studios. A big thank you to everybody that hung out in our chat room with us this evening. Um, Annalisa there with the give him a dollar. I appreciate it. Uh, as Annalisa said, if you like this show or other shows presented to you by the studio, you can go to patreon.com slash IG studios uh, and show some support as little as a dollar a month helps, uh, you know, keep this show and, and the studio itself going. We've got 
uh, the new show coming in the pipeline later on in, or coming up in August, which is going to be myself and Amy Frost. It's going to be Indie Case Files for all of your indie video game news. And then uh, Brennan and I are doing a movie thing. We're making a movie. We're make, well, not, we're not, not making, what you think. No, no. Or, or, or hope, depending on who you are. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we are going to be uh, replacing a podcast uh, and coming up with a movie show. It's going to be called Movie Busters. Uh, we currently have a couple different logos in the works and more formal announcements of that um, will be uh, will be coming up soon. Uh, yeah, Annalisa, thank you so much. Look, intern. I was awesome. wondering how long you were going to... Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, and we have shirts now, everybody. We have a couple different styles. Uh, a couple I came up with, a couple were Brandon's ideas. We have a shirt for this podcast. Uh, you can go to tiny.cc slash IG swag, as you heard at the top of the, uh, Siri, <laughs> come on, chat room. I'm trying to stay on track here. Oh, yeah, it's that kind of movie. Uh, uh. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, tiny.cc slash IG swag. There's several different styles of, Ink to Geek Studio shirts. There's a Mind of a Geek shirt. Uh, I'm going to be putting back up some throwback shirts for Sonics and Sabres and for Geek Access, the very first podcast on this studio. Um, and different styles will go in and out. So go on there, pick them up. Uh, they print once a week, and then um, shipping is very reasonable through the company we go through. So go on there and buy a shirt. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, next week on this show will be Justin Zenger from the Zeng This podcast. Uh, I've listened to a couple episodes. It's a very fun podcast. Uh, so check it out and then catch him here uh, then. Uh, Randy, thank you again, man. This was a lot of fun. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Cool. So for Randy, for Brandon, for myself, and for the rest of IG Studios, thank you all very much for listening. And we'll talk to you guys next week. You've been listening to an Inked Geek Studios podcast. For this and other great shows, go to inkedgeekstudios.com.